G'day guys, a lot of these older navigation devices actually run on Windows commercially embedded and just load their custom navigation program on boot. In fact, if we take a look on the back of this Navman N393-5000, we can see the Windows CE 6.0 sticker. Back when these devices were at the peak of their popularity, there was a fairly active community based around what they called unlocking, which essentially just lets you run Windows CE applications. The most popular tool or front end by far is something called Mio Pocket, which although was originally designed for Mio branded navigation devices, was later found to work on just about every one that's based on Windows CE. The main reason for installing Mio Pocket on your navigation device wasn't for playing games or watching videos, but just to use third-party navigation software to avoid paying for expensive map updates every year. So today, I thought we would try and get Mio Pocket working on our old Navman and take a look at what it can actually do. Let's get into it. We're over on our Windows 10 computer now, and since we will be installing Mio Pocket to a micro SD, we first want to make sure it's formatted as FAT32. Just plugging in my micro SD reader, and I want to go to the SD card that's popped up, right click, go to format, make sure FAT32 is selected, and click start. Click OK. I'm just using a cheap no name 16 gig micro SD. Next, we need to actually download the Mio Pocket files. Just going to Google, typing in Mio Pocket, download. The top two results should be from archive.org, and we do want to download both Mio Pocket and Mio Pocket Mini. Mio Pocket Mini is just the regular Mio Pocket with most of the apps and games removed. Just want to scroll down and I'll download the zip. It's around 87 meg. I want to do the same for Mio Pocket Mini. Just scroll down and download the zip. Once they're both downloaded, we can close off Chrome and open up our downloads folder. We want to extract both zips to their respective folders. Just using 7-zip. I think we'll start with the full Mio Pocket. Let's open up the folder and open up the Mio Pocket README. We want to scroll down to the installation instructions and we want SD installation. Here it is here. It says we have to unzip the Mio Pocket file, which we have, and we want to copy the Mio Auto Run and Media folders to the root of our SD card. So we'll go back. We want the Auto Run and Media. It's going to copy them over to the root, which is just the base of the SD card, not inside any folders. It's going to paste it. Now they've both finished copying, we'll go back to our install notes. We want to scroll down. We don't have the Mio Digi Walker. We don't have the Move and Spirit. We want to scroll down to Navman. So here's the non Mio devices. There it is there, Navman. But I'll turn Word Wrap on. And I might just control F Navman. So it says to create a folder on our SD card named after our model. I'm not sure of the internal model name of this Navman. So it says go back up to the Mio Move and Spirit section, which we will. Here it is here, and we don't have any of those models obviously, so we want to read this section here. Basically we want to connect our navman to our computer so we can access the internal flash, and we want to look for a text file called App Startup, and it should have a failed error near the bottom, it looks like this, and this should have the correct folder name we need. Just using a mini USB cable, connecting it to my computer. We'll go back to this PC. There we are there, Navman. So we'll open that up. There's our app startup text file. There's a lot of errors, but if you scroll down the bottom, there it is there. Create process, storage card slash our folder that we need. So we want to copy this name here. For me, it's tata3 underscore ts5020. It's going to copy that. And we want to go back to our SD card. We want to make a new folder. And we want to rename the folder to what was mentioned in the app startup file. So I'm just pasting that in, tata3. Now if we go back to our installation, Documents, scroll back down to Navman. There it is there. We want to copy Mio Auto Run.exe and MSCR and Mortscript.exe to that folder and rename Mio Auto Run to Auto.exe and the MSCR to Auto.MSCR. So we'll go back, go to our downloads, go to the full Mio pocket. There's the three files there Mio Auto Run, exe, MSCR, and script. Gonna copy that to our SD card inside the folder. And we want to rename the EXE to Auto, capital A, and the MSCR to Auto, capital A as well. That should be everything we have to do on our computer. We'll safely eject both the Navman and our SD card, and we'll boot our Navman to the stock OS. Ignore the VHS in the background, I'm just using it to hold up the Navman due to the right angled charger. And I did have to use the 12 volt charger for this. My mini USB cable just wasn't able to put enough power into it. It kept failing to boot and going to a white screen with lines. So if that happens to you, it's a power issue. Once we're on the stock Navman screen, we want to insert our Mio Pocket SD card we made. You want to wait a few seconds. There it is. You want to select Run Mio Pocket and it should install. 
Keep in mind this installs to the micro SD and not to the internal flash of the Navman, so at any time you want to go back to stock firmware, just remove the SD card. So although it did say it installed correctly, when it rebooted itself to load into Mio Pocket, it has frozen on this screen. It's not responding, so I think I'll do a hard reset and we'll try run it again. Unfortunately, I have the exact same issue, so I think I'll try the same steps again, but using the Mio Pocket Mini instead and see if that's any better. All right, we're back. I have done a fresh install of the Mio Mini software this time. And since the Mini is pretty bare, I did end up copying the full games folder from the full version over to the SD card, as well as a few games that I downloaded online. Just inserting the micro SD card again, and hopefully it doesn't freeze. Run Mio Pocket. And we've got our Windows CE desktop, which is pretty good. It's loading something, back to the desktop. And here is Mio Pocket loaded. There is a pop-up that tells us it's only gonna turn on once and how we can navigate. Pretty easy, click OK. My navband is using a resistive touchscreen, not capacitive, so I'm just gonna be using a pointy cotton bud to navigate. All right, we'll take a look around. I am inside the house, so we won't have any GPS signal, so I won't open any map software. Let's take a look at, start with calculator. Yeah, it works as you would expect. U-book must be a text reader. It is rotated. I think I saw some books on the SD card, and there's a bunch of them. Try Aesop's Fables. 73 pages, it does work. Close out of that. Media player, I think this is our video player. It's got the Simpsons movie Spider Pig clip as a demo file. And it does work, see if we can go full screen. There we go. It actually looks really crisp and uh, clear on this. Pretty impressive. Could definitely watch a full movie on this back in the day. Nitrogen, I think, is the MP3 player. So it is playing, not too sure if you can hear it, it's very quiet. The volume button didn't do too much at all. It looks like whoever made this release is a big fan of Simpsons. We've got a notepad. There's an on-screen keyboard. That's pretty handy. Don't save. Solitaire. Annoyingly, it doesn't take up the full screen. It's under the top left corner. But it works as you would expect. Task manager. Looks like we have 128 mega RAM. So that's not too bad. A bunch of stuff running in the background. You can't change to logical cores or anything like that, like on modern Windows. Resources. Oh, so I got 128 meg internal. 512k, I'm not too sure what that is. Must be RAM, maybe RAM disks. Our storage, SD card. It's pretty cool. Oh yeah, so one, 121 megaram, so be 128 megaram, ARM 11, 480 by 272. We don't have Wi-Fi on this, no. Maybe some uh, navmans do have internet connection. Some basic settings, and about. We've got RegEdit, which I'm assuming is going to be rare, registry editor, nothing too special there, we won't touch that. Cab install be for installing cab files. EXE check, not too sure what that is. Doesn't work, ironically. Device settings. Okay, so we can change the basic navman settings. 
notice it is the Mio system, not the default Navman one, so this is still running in Mio Pocket. We can calibrate if we wanted to. Volumes all the way up. Backlight. Tells you it's charging. Date and time language in about. Control panel. Oh yeah, just standard Windows CE control panel. We do have Bluetooth. And uh, we do not have Bluetooth. But this uh, build does support Bluetooth, which is neat. Got the built-in stylus calibrator. Now uh, we can change our resolution, but we'll leave all that as default. Time sync, we can synchronize our time with GPS, I'm guessing. And these are all our navigation apps. So as mentioned, this is the mini version of Mio Pocket. The full version has loads and loads of games. We weren't able to get that working, but I did copy the entire games folder. So if we go to program files, so this is the start menu, go down to tools. We go to the games folder, free cells not installed and solitaire we've seen. So go to tools, we'll go to file manager, CE commander, go to storage card, we'll go to win CE programs. So these are the ones I've downloaded. It looks like I didn't copy the games folder over, which is annoying. We'll try the ones I've downloaded. We've got Chocolate Doom. We have to install that. We'll do default, default, install. And that was failed. We'll try it again, but change the path to our SD card. And it looks like it has failed to install. There we go. It's a lot of um, a lot of the same Doom icons up there, so that's no good. We'll try InfoNess, which is a NES emulator. And it won't let us navigate folders, so that was no good. We'll try PocketNess. That looks promising. Try open a ROM. I've got Mega Man on here somewhere. There it is. And it is just a black screen. That is unfortunate. I've also got GNU Boy, which is a Game Boy emulator. And apparently it's not a valid WinC application. On the website I downloaded it from, it says it was. I will go and copy the games folder over and we'll come back. Through the power of video editing, we are back. So I've just copied all of the games from the full Mio Pocket over. And we'll take a look at a few of them. We've got Zebra, I'm not sure what that is. Looks like just a copy of Go. Pretty cool. What else do we have? Chess Genius, hoping this is a chess game. Play the demo. That's pretty neat how it does have a chess tutor. If I go there, it's going to take it. I wonder if it warns me it does. That's pretty cool if you're new at chess or you just want to improve your game. This could be pretty neat. Guessing crosswords, just a crossword one. And didn't find the dictionary. Not sure what game box is. Doesn't load. Load, whoops, load runner. That's full screen. And it has music. So I'm not sure how I play. Looks like you can just tap where you want and it does navigate. I wonder how you fire if you just tap. Okay, so firing you just tap on the brick. This is actually a lot of fun. I wonder how far you can navigate if I tap up the top corner. It is trying to go there. Can I drop down? This will be a lot of fun on long car trips. Let's see what else we got. Microsoft's, Microsoft, I'm guessing that is the Microsoft games, Free Cell, Solitaire, and Hearts. Nothing too special there. Miss Pac-Man. Tap 
the screen. Start. Wonder how you navigate if it's touch screen. I'm going to catch it. And I got it. It is a little bit tricky navigating. It's not as straightforward as Load Runner was. It's a fun little game. You know, Zuma. Play. This is just the trial version once again. So the screen is quite small, but it is touch screen. So where you touch is where it shoots, so that makes it a lot easier. Whoops. That's pretty fun, but I think you only get five levels, so not very good. Got a lot more in here. 3210. Not sure what this is. Or 3210, maybe. So three. And they expand until they hit something. And game over. I have no idea how to play this, but also notice it is in split screen. Only half the screen's used. Can I still navigate? I can still navigate. Oh no, it uh, minimized it. Now I've done it. Oh. Not too sure how we're going to close that, but we'll just continue on. The bottom right icon. Doesn't seem to do too much. I might close this off and see if we can kill the application. There it is there. Oop. Go to task manager. Process, see if I can kill the game. Is it 3210? Can't see it on here. Uh, it looks like I've crashed it somehow. I think there was an option for toggle taskbar. There it is. So it looks like I have broken it. It is running in split screen. I think that's as good a place as any to leave it today. Although this is pretty much useless today, this was a huge deal back when it uh, first came out. A lot of these older navigation devices are pretty much e-waste at this point. So if you do find one for free, it might be worth picking it up just to have a play around with Windows CE. I think that'll do it for today. If you have any questions or comments, let me know down below. Otherwise, thanks for watching.